Hello and welcome to a Plan for D with Experts video series. My name is Bernd Gerstenberger. I'm Knowledge Domain Expert for AutoCAD and Specialized Toolset and Escalation Lead for AutoCAD Plan for D. Today's topic are the new features of AutoCAD Plan for D 2023. We have several new features to present. The new features will be presented in separate videos. This video is part of a new feature series for 2023. In this video, I want to present the redesign of the isometric annotation settings in Project Setup. The isometric annotation setup was completely redesigned in Project Setup. We have now extended annotation capabilities and it's much easier to configure in Project Setup to the specific needs. There's no need anymore to adopt the XML files directly anymore. Look for the interface, how it has looked like in 2022 and the changes now in 2023. As you can see in a first glance, there's a big change in the uh, user interface in project setup for the annotation node. But let's go into the details. We will have here five tabs here, settings, table IDs, connections, piping and property changes. I will explain every tab here now separately, starting with a settings tab. So in the settings tab, uh, you see general settings. Uh, in the ISO config XML annotation node directly there, you see a lot of text which are now visible in the settings like the north, uh, south, east and west tags. Some tags are still not listed here like the bumper distance or the minimum, minimum letter length. So these tags, if you want to change them, you have still to do directly in the ISO config XML file. Additionally, which wasn't uh, formal possible, you have here also a block leader and placement section on the right side, where you can uh, set the default values for those uh, items which can of course be overwritten in a specific annotation scheme. Next up, table IDs. This is how to annotate the components which are listed on a bill of material by the ID in the drawing. Um, so we have here, this is the old one. You see we have a possibility to check, spool welds and cut pieces are disabled but you can check them and these are the table IDs. Here you can use, let's say, the labels and an enclosure, some kind, but it's a little bit limited. Also, you see here, control valves and non-control valves splitted here. And now how it looks like in 2023. You see here, the bill of material, and uh, for components and for pipe, uh, we are just using different filters. The pipe one is using the filter part number aligned and the other one is just part number filter. You see here also that the, there's no split again between valve text and non-control valves, uh, control valves and uh, non-control valves because uh, control valves, this is something which we are using for pinned ID classes, uh, components, but not for plan 3D components. Uh, so control valves are here instruments. And if you want to configure instruments, you can still do that, but not here anymore, but in, in the tab piping. There's an annotation scheme called uh, instrument tag, where you can do the setting which you could do formally on that one. This makes it more clearer because we are here only talking about table IDs, not for our annotation schemes. It is also very easy to create new group components. If you sc scroll down with a slider here a little bit, then you will find the group components. You can just click here, add component group, and a new dialog pops up. And you have just to check which components you want to list for that new group components uh, scheme. It's also very easy to add a prefix and suffix directly into a group. Just point the mouse before or after the property and enter text, like it was done here with F for before flange ID and B for before um, bold ID. 
And also you can set here with line breaker and it is very visible, very transparent, how it will look like afterwards in your isometric drawing. If you scroll really at the bottom here with a slider, you will find the annotation details here as well, showing you the name of the annotation scheme, part number aligned, the filter we used one, and the scheme, it is a component scheme. In this case, it could be also a line number scheme, for example. So next up is the tab connections. This is just to customize your annotations for connections, continuations on your isometric drawing. We have now additional options in the project setup, um, block lead and placement as before. And, but now just looking for our images, this is how it looks like in 2022. And now the things has been changed. It looks like that. So you see what you want to an annotate here on the right side. So our connected pipelines, I think you know these uh, words very well in the section of isoconfig XML file. These are the different themes and uh, um, these are the different continuation schemes in that as a subnode in the isoconfig XML file. And as mentioned, we have here the block leader and placement stuff and also the attribute text is updated. So it is more transparent, what you see is what you get. For example, formally you see here that a reference to, which is a default property, it will be shown here in 2023. Formally it wasn't shown. It was shown in the ISO config XML file, but not in the user interface. Also the format will be shown by including the line break here. Next tab. It's about piping, and this is completely new. Formally, if you want to create or edit an annotation scheme, it was only possible directly in the ISO config XML file. Now you can do nearly everything, with one exception, directly here in the user interface. It is very easy to add a new annotation scheme just by clicking the button Add here. Here's a button add, just click here to create a new annotation scheme. This dialog will pop up. Uh, you see that we have two tabs here, standard and advanced. In the standard tab, uh, you can just select the specific component class. And on the right side, you see the end types. So here you will set the filters. This is a selection list here. And if you want to have more end types added to this filter, just click here the plus symbol to add more end types for that filter for this specific new annotation scheme. You can set additional conditions. This is just a selection list showing all properties which are defined for that specific class. In this case, the cap class, which is selected here. So also a custom properties will be shown here. We have uh, some kind of operators here, is, like, whatever. And uh, as for the n types, n types before, you have a plus sign to add more than one additional condition for that annotation scheme. If you switch to the tab advanced, you can just select here in what is mentioned here, the filter name, a specific filter which is available in the ISO config XML file. When you have selected one of a filter here, of bold is selected, you see the filter statement as in read only here at the bottom as just as a text. So that you get an impression what the filter is about. This is also one exception here. If you want to change a filter or you want to create a new filter, here you have to go uh, ISO config XML file to add a filter there for your needs. So after creating, don't forget to fill the field attribute text, which is here an orange rectangle, because um, yeah, you have set a filter, but now what you have selected a lot of things, of course you want to annotate them, and here you have to uh, use the attribute text. 
And I will speak a little bit more about the attribute text, but just a note, the annotation details as shown before is if you scroll down, you see also again, the most important properties beside of your attribute text because it's on the same page. But now talking about attribute text, if you click the add button of attribute text, uh, this dialog pop-ups with three uh, tabs again, plan for the PZF and symbols. Uh, plan for the you just have to select a specific uh, class and then you can select one of the properties which are available for that class. That's it. Not so bad. If you switch to PZF, you see the header of your PZF file listed here, which you can use here as well for your attribute text. Symbols. We have two symbols, not less, not more. You can just use them. And of course, you can just enter a text before or after the property which you have added, or just click with the mouse into a field and start to enter your text. So moving on to the last tab of annotation setup, property changes, which is the property breaker scheme in your ISO config XML file. Which creates callouts to the favorite changes. So for example, if you have a spec breaker here in your pipeline, the spec will change from CS300 to CS150 maybe, then it will be annotated, showing a symbol normally, showing the name of the one spec on the one side and for the other side, the other spec name. We have, I have some notes here. Uh, just for elevation, also for elevation extended. You see here the attribute text, elevation, and here the symbol. It is not possible for specific for the, those two elevation property changes to delete or just to change the elevation text. This is fixed. You can delete or change the symbol but that's it for validation and elevation extended property change. If you click add to the attribute text for the elevation and the insulation limit was also an exception here because formerly I've shown you PCF, plan 3D and symbols tab for these two property changes only the symbols tab is available. For all the rest, all properties are shown, plan 3D, PCF and symbols, but only one property can be used. Meaning if you have already added here in a property in this text and you click again add, selecting a different property now, this will replace the existing proper attribute text here. So this was about the redesign of the isometric annotation settings in Project Setup. I hope it is useful for you and this is what I want to present in this part of a series about new features 2023 today. I'm looking forward for your comments to this video. Thank you for your time and goodbye.